Hello and welcome to another out of spec detailing video. You join me in our usual spot, clear detailing, but it's actually me instead of Colton, but Colton's still here. I'm here. He's here. So I'm going to put the mic on Colton for most of this video, but I thought, hey, I hadn't actually ever been on out of spec detailing before. So let, thanks for letting me take over your channel. Of course. And uh, I brought my Model S here. So this we just picked up moments ago after the accident. For those of you who are not familiar, our detailing crowd or viewers may not know, this car was involved in a suspension only accident where the car was spun and crashed into a curb. One of our colleagues crashed it. So um, now we got it back fixed, which is great. So let me show you around really quick. This has basically been a month, a month and a half uh, in the, the process of getting repaired. And if you go back to our very first video on this out of spec detailing channel, Colton spent a ton of time getting the paint absolutely perfect, ceramic coating it, making it wonderful. Now that the car has had hands all over it, it sat outside for a short period of time. Thankfully, Tesla did keep it indoors for most of the repair process, at least four, four weeks indoors. Um, we wanna basically just clear off all of this dust and see what's damaged because of course with technicians working around it with heavy tools opening the hood getting inside i'm sure the paint's going to have some defects and uh basically this is just the evaluation what has happened to the car if you take a look on this side over here we have brand new martian wheels that we've put on on the driver's side we're going to move them around so that the new wheels and tires are on a particular axle i don't know if front or rear yet um, but basically this is the episode where we just pick up the Model S from the service center, time to knock all the dirt off and see what kind of scratches and issues we have. And then we'll of course discuss with Colton what he thinks we need to do to get it back to its original pre-accident condition, which is sort of the whole so goal. Let's get all of that nasty grime that's been sitting on here knocked off. So we're gonna use um, a soap that I've kind of been testing out and I'm excited to show Kyle this. I'm excited to play around a little bit with this. So this is Adam's graphene shampoo. So it actually has a little bit of um, SiO2 in it, as well as some graphene in there to add just the lightest layer of protection on the paint. So we're gonna put this not only in our foam cannon here, but actually in our wash bucket, just to give that nice little layer back on here. Because there's quite a bit of dirt on here, I think what we're gonna do first is foam it down, let it kind of dwell on there, pick up all of those dirt particles, and then we'll do a full rinse down, refoam it, and start the actual hand wash process. So let's get the foam canning going here. So we've got two ounces in there. We'll make it a little extra sudsy in here and go for a full four. And then we'll step over this way to the beautiful Kranzla and get this all set up ready to go. All right, so we also, we have this outside. Obviously, Kyle just brought it here. Um, the paint was a little bit warm, so we closed the door off. It's uh, 80 degrees outside. Ambient temp, not that much, but on black paint like this, it can be very warm to the touch. So now it's ready to go. Let's start foaming this down with the graphene. And the interesting thing about this shampoo is it doesn't have as much foam as say like um, chemical guys snow foam or anything like that it's a little bit lighter but still provides a good layer So we've now got it foamed down. We're gonna let this sit on there, dwell, eat away some of that dirt and debris that's been sitting on there. Kyle actually just mentioned to me, this car has not been washed um, since the California road trip. So bugs and grime on there. Honestly, didn't notice a ton on there, which is- One touchless wash. Yeah, okay, so one touchless wash. But it seems like the coating is lasting pretty well in terms of what you're needing on it. Um, getting those bugs removed and uh, yeah, so we're gonna let this sit on here. Definitely any remaining bugs on the windshield, backs of the mirrors, whole front end are really gonna 
um, get saturated by the snow foam here, and then we'll go in with a heavy rinse, refoam it, and then start the so wash We've process. let this sit for a little bit. It's kind of eating away that dirt and grime, definitely getting some of the bugs done. I went ahead and washed the windows. Not worried about scratching any windows because they're a lot different than the soft black paint. Um, also, just a quick note, these things are just the biggest lifesaver. I think in detailing, I do more cable management than you would ever even expect. So let's get this thing rinsed down, get that big layer of dirt off, and then we'll re-foam it. All right, it's basically clean at this point. I don't even know if we need to hand wash it. Just kidding, but look how much nicer that immediately looks just by foaming it and rinsing it. And again, sat outside for five or six weeks. Isn't that incredible? That's why having a barrier on there, a little bit of protection is just so amazing. Actually, it was funny because I was doing this GLS in the bay this morning and there was like water stains all over the side. And I'm like, these are not coming off. And you're like sitting there scrubbing them off because it's naked paint, but nonetheless, Let's get it rinsed down. the initial rinse done and then we just fog down the front end notice a little bit of bug residue still on there so now we're going to start the hand wash process i like to have foam on there it just gives a little bit more lubricity on there and just make it safe and easy not to put any scratches in so let's foam this down one more time <laughs> amazing yeah i love the smell of this stuff too yeah and this has a lot of citrus in it yeah. so it allows it to pick up that dirt and easily take it away it smells like an orange peel yeah <laughs> all right kyle's ready to start washing here. hell yeah so take your wash mitt got one in here for me yeah all right i'm gonna wring it out and i just want to say it's been five <laughs> years since i've washed the car I was gonna say, I think I'm witnessing a miracle right now. <laughs> I used to be really into detailing. Yeah, no I know. So, no one yeah. would believe that. It was very therapeutic. But I was like Colton, I was like hardcore nerd level. I just didn't have the skills like he has. So I would end up messing things up more. So, and let's start on half the hood here and you're gonna feel how slick this feels. Okay. Whoa, never felt that before. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Straight lines always. Straight lines always, and then probably do half the hood, flip, and go to the front bumper here. Already ahead of you, sir. I already flipped. Doesn't that feel incredible, though? Like, yeah, it's wild. Nice. You don't have to apply any extra pressure. No. Just slide it across. Wow. Awesome. I'm gonna hit the rinse bucket, get everything in that grit guard down there, see if I remember how to do all this stuff. A nice rinse. <laughs> Back into the wash mitt tube bucket method here. Might be too big of a panel that I'm doing right here. Uh, full door is pretty normal. Flip it. Ah, washy, washy. Hell yeah. Car sports open. Oh, there is a car wash mode we could put the car in. I think it's all right. I'm gonna be really gentle with that plastic stuff.
So ready to start drying now. Big key here is to just get the initial big parts of water. Um, Kyle's over here with a towel as well. We're not gonna be putting a ton of pressure down, literally just kind of scooping up and holding that water. You'd be amazed with these towels, how much they actually hold. Look at that, just completely dry. So I'm definitely seeing a little bit of spotting in there, which is kind of normal. Um, because this car sat out a little bit, not really that surprised. We can kind of work on a process eventually. We're gonna figure out what exactly we're gonna do to this car and kind of go from there. You know, Kyle, honestly, for how long this sat outside though, just like getting beat on in the sun, the road trips, like this is its first hand wash. Since the tow day. And literally like, has it been almost like three months now? Three, three months since the first yeah. hand wash. Yeah, and like look how stunning it looks already. Kyle, what are your impressions? I'm gonna stand close to the mic. Holy smokes, I can't believe how well this yeah. thing has held up. Um, impressive too, because it's been two and a half, three months since you had it in for the full thing. I honestly haven't treated the car with that much respect. Sure. I've pretty much taken it on a road trip, 3,000 miles <laughs> uh, to the car wash, maybe twice, maybe wow. three times, Wow. which is touchless. And just yep. like you mentioned, rinsing the car. And this is the first hand wash since. And it's been through the whole accident and the repair. And without digging in too deep, I mean, I can see some small imperfections, but it's pretty yep. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think overall, so I think we did introduce a little bit of water spotting in there. Um, we could use some other chemicals if we were really trying to get those out. We're going to probably have to talk about what are the next steps for this particular car? Do you want to leave it alone? Do you want to, you know, go back in, correct everything, get it back to pre-accident perfection. We'll kind of, you know, talk through that and figure it out. Yeah, we got to take the flashlight to the paint. Yeah, I, I did a little bit, saw a few scratches here and there, definitely a lot of fingerprints all over this. Um, the car was dirty, so anytime you're touching the paint, um, especially when it's dirty, you can introduce those swirl marks and scratches in there. Um, overall, I mean, as a detailer, I'm kind of happy to see it in this stage. Uh, when I first heard about the accident and then I remember you guys calling me or like, it's sitting outside for a few days, it's been raining. And I'm like, this is like the worst case scenario. And the car was beached essentially. Yep. And then we had talked about, do we put a cover on this? And I am so glad we didn't <laughs> because I think the coating did its job and it protected the car for the most part. Um, you know, there, there's some stuff there where it's definitely getting abused. This is not ideal situations for it, but to show that you can still abuse these things and, um, you know, they work pretty darn well. I'm impressed, very impressed. All right, Good. All right, Colton. So now we got the whole car down to basically the bare ceramic coat. Yep, for, for the, the most part. part. Uh, let's take the flashlight to it. This is where we basically learn about the quality of the paint and decide, do we redo it? Because again, I'm pretty sure we can build the insurance mm -hmm. if we do a redo, because again, their, their job is to get the car back to pre-accident condition. Exactly. And it was perfect pre-accident. Yep. It's a hard condition to get it back to. It, it <laughs> is, yeah. Um, I would say the nice thing, so I'm gonna bring it in here. Um, now, some of the scratches in here are not horrible. Um, there's definitely some marks in there. May have a hard time picking them up. I'm gonna kind of move this around so you guys can slightly see that. Now, I would say one of the biggest things this has is quite a bit of water spotting. Again, you have a black car, it was sitting outside. I remember that week, I think it was like between 90 and 100 degrees all week. It was like, so hot and just the paint must have been, you know, 200 degrees. It, and it literally will be. Um, yeah. Like on an 80 degree day, like today, if you were to leave the car outside, you put a um, thermometer on the paint, it's typically like 170 to 180 degrees, even though it's 80 degrees ambient. Yep. So can imagine how much that heats up. So the problem with that is when the cars get wet, basically the paint expands and contracts a little bit. Um, a lot of the times what will happen when the paint's expanded, you get water in there and it essentially dries and then it encapsul yeah. encapsulates itself Interesting. as the paint cools down. It's a very tricky, like overly nerdy, you know, talk about water spotting, but that's exactly what happens. Now, 
I believe if this car wasn't coated, the amount of water spotting would have been Insane. hysterical. Right. Like it would have been a nightmare. Right. Um, so I think the coating in that case saved it. That's exactly what we use the coatings for is a sacrificial barrier. So if we do decide, and I, I'm kind of leaning towards it probably needs to get redone. Yeah, um, it'll too. take a probably light cut because this paint's so soft. Um, I think some of these deeper scratches in here, we'd probably have to go in and do a lighter compound on them and then go back and polish it. And you think there's enough paint left after working the paint Without originally? Yeah, okay. because I, I wasn't hammering the paint originally. Okay. Um, the tricky thing with paints like this is you have a rapid amount of paint coming off. And that's when we get into talking about um, residue control. So the yeah. residue coming off the paint in tear pad using yeah. the blowout Blow method, yep. yada, yada, yada. But on this in general, I think we could probably even do a light polish and we can try that as well and see what that does. Some areas uh, maybe need a little bit more, but we can also spot do that here and there. And then the way to know once you've removed the coating is to basically throw water on it and see if it sheets or beads. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, and here's another thing that um, we can probably talk, we need to do a full video talking about um, pro level coatings versus consumer. So you have a consumer level coating. Mm -hmm. um, the pro version of this G Technic Crystal Serum Ultra, you have to sand it off. Sand, oh, that would be a pain in the butt in the So scenario. that's where I'm getting at is like to go that extra level to get, you know, either double or a couple more years of durability, is it worth it at the end? Because this is gonna hit it with a buffer and it's gonna come right off. Well, for me, I didn't want the longest durability. Right. I wanted the car protected for a shorter period of time in case something like this happened or in case we induced a swirl or scratch. Precisely, Because yeah. then we can remove the coating, fix the error, recoat without screwing up too much of paint thickness. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so I'm glad we went the way we did. Yeah, really and that glad. that's why, as you know, from a detailing perspective, I haven't felt the need to jump there. Be I mean, you saw the performance of the coating. Like, it, yeah. water is still just shooting off I of I mean, the thing. coating's still on, no question, and yeah. doing its job. There are a couple things I've noticed, though. Yes. And that would be... Oh, my gosh. How are you going to survive? Yeah, what the heck is going on <laughs> over here? <laughs> and these could be just small rock chips or just maybe a little bit of... Yeah, a little bit of bird dung or something, who knows. Definitely some rock chips in there. Yeah. Um, and again, what I'd like to do is have a vial, I'll order some later on. Touch have, up paint. Have a vial of touch up paint, we can yeah. quickly hit those. My kind of premise with touch up paint is to take the distraction away. So I think in general, we'll be pretty good there. Just getting you closer together for audio. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, what else, Kyle, what do you think as far as how it sits now. Yeah, look, looks good, not great, not loving the water spots. Yep. The water spots are the big deal, I think. Yep. Um, and honestly, can we shut the lights off? Is that possible? Yeah, and can we just look to see what kind of scratches are on this thing? Because of course, most of the damage was done on the driver's side, and that's probably where they were working around the car. So I want to take a look over there. But I mean, no question, the car looks amazing from 10 feet, from five feet, from three feet, but we have to keep in mind this car looked amazing from a millimeter before and that's ultimately what i'd like to get it back to so i mean bring it in here we've definitely got like here definitely some good scratching going on here kind of odd that it may be on the front of the hood there um you never know i mean who knows what happened in this car i mean people yeah. were around it working on it walking by it you just never know exactly and as we i mean honestly like looking in this paint this doesn't look terribly bad there's yeah. definitely some water spots of course i'm honestly leaning towards the water spots could be lightly polished off mm -hmm. the deeper scratched areas um, can probably bump up a little in the compound or even for those particular spots exactly so like this area i don't need to recut the whole hood but mm -hmm. i can do some test spots and see okay yes i can indeed get the water spotting out but areas like this we're talking about i may have to come in here lightly compound it then repolish it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And can we take a, this fender was what stood out to me when we got the car. Oh, and yes. I can see a ton of scratches already. In yes, this. definitely. And let's, I'm gonna have the camera over here so we can get a nice angle. There you go, you should probably be able to see those yeah. now. That looks like when we first brought the car to you. Yeah, and you remember this, funny enough, was one of the worst panels yes. that we had. And in the video we did, this is the first panel I started on because it was like, right. okay, this is- all your testing. Yeah, 
it was kind of bad here. So I had to figure out, okay, how are we going to attack the rest of the car and then, you know, go from there? Yeah. Well, I, I would say this probably, and, and, and likely the most damaged panel from the whole working on situation. And we can't blame Tesla for rubbing up against the car. They had to work on the car. Yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's just not how it was when it went in. Uh, most people don't have this level of paint care on a, right. on a general shop. Right. And let's take a look back here because again, they would have been working a lot in the rear. I can already see some pebbling in the paint protection film. So I'm, I'm glad to see too, I'm just quickly looking down the door. Yeah. Water spotting is very minimal on the door. Oh, that's good. Um, which kind of makes sense, obviously, right? Because you've got off. water coming off. But yeah, definitely the PPF is getting, getting some work done. Look at even back here. Yeah. That part of the door. These got, you know, such wide fenders on them. But Kyle, take the light over there and see yep. what you see. Let's see what we can find through here. Um, yeah, definitely noticing scratching all along here. It's like someone brushed up against the car would be my guess. Um, yeah, swirls all around. Really not looking good. I can see individual deeper spots, probably when someone just grabbed up or touched the car. Back here, really not bad. A couple little marks in this area. I don't know if you get you can pick those up at all on the camera but yeah charge port definitely people have been hitting it trying to open it leaving some scratches so yeah definitely need some love i mean it's not nearly as bad as when it first went in of course we're always going to have this mark we made the decision to not repair this scratch right here uh, and that was just a factory defect or maybe right after we took delivery but my impression is you know we had pretty much perfect paint before all this and Definitely. I mean, it's just not where it was. So yeah. I think we're going to go and at least attempt the process to see uh, what it would take to fix the car, get it back to where it should be. We'll work with the insurance company, let them know ahead of time, see what their thoughts are. And of course, we'll update you on, on the progress and how this goes and also how the payment side of it goes uh, working with insurance. I've never had to do that. Colton has. We'll see how they are working with all this stuff. But it's a sort of a specialty car that we've put a lot of time and effort into making it look right and it should stay looking right.